All right, this is OpenStax U.S. History, Chapter 19, Section 2, The African-American Great Migration and New European Immigration. So let us recall that in 19-1, we talked about urbanization. And that is the growth of cities. Contributing to this growth of cities was immigration coming from specifically African Americans out of the South into the North and immigration from Europe, but what we call new immigrants from Europe. So first let's talk about the Great Migration. So the Great Migration is the movement of African Americans from the south to the north. And when arriving in the north, many people ended up going into the cities, which contributed to that growth. When we talk about migration, whether that's in migration, which is moving from within the United States, or immigration, which is people coming from out of the United States into the United States, we often have to refer to push and pull factors. A push factor is why someone leaves, All right? So what is pushing somebody to leave a certain area? Pull is why someone chooses a destination. Right, so there are things that are pushing people out from where they currently live, and there's things that are pulling people to where they eventually end up moving. So for the Great Migration and for African Americans, much of the push factors related to discrimination, groups like the Ku Klux Klan lynching Jim Crow laws, which created a system of segregation in the South, uh, ultimately pushed and other, other types of violence ultimately pushed African Americans out of the South into the North where those Jim Crow laws didn't exist. Uh, what pulled uh, African Americans to the North was job opportunities. Think about in the factories. Was civil rights. Again, civil rights means civilian rights. You know, specifically how they relate to no segregation in the North. Segregation was the system in place in the South where there were separate facilities. So the white school, the black school, the white drinking fountain, the black drinking fountain, two separate uh, or segregated uh, populations. In the North, that wasn't the case. And also education, which there was just simply more opportunities in the North. This is related to segregation, but just in general. Generally speaking, education levels were higher in the North than they were in the South. However, that's not to say that when arriving in the North that African Americans did not face discrimination. They certainly did. So discrimination or racial discrimination still occurred in the North. You know, prejudice based off skin color occurred in the North. But, you know, it wasn't codified in the law. So one example that you did find in the North was a discrimination when it came to housing. So redlining would be the refusal to allow blacks to purchase homes. All right. So in the North, there still existed uh, a sense of discrimination, not codified in the law like the Jim Crow laws, but certainly in areas like, for example, uh, housing, where simply there were real estate companies that would not sell certain homes to black families. So that still existed. Uh, as far as European immigration goes, uh, European immigration was something that historically had, you know, it, it had developed in the United States, but there was certainly something that changed and kind of a good way to think about immigration is to think about it before and after the Civil War. Typically, immigrants before the Civil War came from Western and Northern Europe. So this is before Civil War. And, and Western and Northern Europe, we mean English, Irish, 
and German immigrants. But after the Civil War, right, we might call this new immigration, old, um, immigrants came from different areas. They were from Eastern Europe, they were from Southern Europe, they were from Russia, they were from Italy, they were more, more Catholic, even though you had a number of Catholic Irish immigrants come beforehand, uh, a greater proportion were Catholic this time. Uh, many of them were Jewish, as composed of before. So these were new immigrants because they came from different parts of Europe. Right? They were quote unquote new in that sense, and that there hadn't been a lot of Italians, there hadn't been a lot of Russians, there hadn't been a lot of Jews in the US before, now many more are coming over. And just like African Americans in the South, there are push and pull factors at work. Uh, famine is, uh, you know, uh, famine means that there is not enough food. So famines breaking out in certain parts of the world cause people to move to the United States. There's religious persecution. This was especially true of the Jewish population. A lot of Jewish Russians uh, were facing persecution, came to the United States because of, because of those push factors. Uh, military service, which was made mandatory in other nations. So maybe you don't want to serve in the military, so you go to the US. So all these things were push, right? These were what were pushing people out of the countries that they came from, Italy, Russia, some of those other areas. The pull factor was the economic opportunities. Think about that standard of living we talked about previously, the jobs that were available in the US. You know, this is what pulled people, right? This was the pull pack, uh, factor in the US. Uh, one of the major centers for immigration was Ellis Island in New York, so sometimes called the uh, gateway into the U.S. And as far as admission, right, so there was a Bureau of Immigration, and the Bureau of Immigration would be responsible for allowing who into the country. For the most part, there were no exceptions. Most people were allowed into the U.S. There were very few people denied, so we might say few people denied entry. You know, there were a couple reasons as to why you could be denied if you were sick, right? So don't spread any sort of disease in the country. Uh, in some cases, if you didn't have enough money, uh, you were not let into the country. Uh, or if you were, you know, if you were, you know, held certain radical ideas, like if you were saying down with the United States, if you were quote unquote, uh, you know, crazy, right, or mentally ill, or if you had certain ideologies, like you were an anarchist and you wanted to, you know, you came into Ellis Island saying that you're going to blow up the U.S., they weren't going to let you in. Uh, but for the most part, you know, these were the criteria that you needed to pass. And again, most people were allowed in. Very few, like 5%, were actually denied entry in the United States. And once those new immigrants arrived, and you can see a picture of Ellis Island here, and immigrants being processed, having to go through pretty much a very quick medical examination to make sure they weren't sick, uh, various ethnic enclaves created in the cities. Little Italy, Chinatown is a good example. So, you know, immigrant com communities stuck together. You know, you could, in the United States during the Gilded Age, you could find newspapers published in more than 80 different languages. And that's because there was a strong sense of retaining cultural identity. So a lot of culture was retained, retention. That is to say, you know, did, did immigrants immediately assimilate into American society? For the most part, no, right? This idea of the melting pot was a much longer process. It was usually the children of immigrants, maybe first generation or second immigration that or, or uh, generation that became much more assimilated into American society. Uh, and because this rapid immigration had been occurring so quickly, the United States set up a commission to investigate the impact of immigration on the United States. Uh, and what they determined was that there needed to be some sort of uh, measure to control it more. You also had organizations that provided a backlash against immigration, so we might call this a backlash. 
The American Protective Association is an anti-immigrant organization that sought to limit immigration. We might call it specifically anti-new immigrant because there was something particular about these new immigrants that were much more uh, concerning for the American population. They were different than before, different languages, different cultures, different uh, religions, etc., cetera, et cetera. And this backlash against uh, immigration led to a couple of things. It led to the creation of an English language literacy test, which would be a criteria for immigration. It led to the Chinese Exclusion Act, which was the first immigration restriction based on national origin. Again, before denial into the United States was never based off of who you were, right? So, you know, it was always based off these criteria. Well, now you're finding more and more uh, laws that are based off ethnicity and national origin. The Chinese were the first one to be targeted. But in the 1920s, you had two laws that were created. And this was more or less, you could see them as a backlash against uh, the immigration, very heavy immigration that occurred during the Gilded Age. Uh, that was the Immigration Act and the National Origin Act. Origins Act, with which with both, excuse me, which both limited immigration, specifically of new immigrants. So that was people from Russia, people from Italy, people who were Catholic, people who were Jewish, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 